Time, let's send it back to the studio now. Chuck Stokes standing by with some of his very special guests tonight. Chuck? Thank you very much, Dave. I'm joined now by three of Detroit's former mayors, Mayor Dennis Archer, Mayor Roman Gribbs, and Mayor Ken Cockrell. Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining us. Uh, I've been in this town about 32 years. I've done a lot of interviews and I've seen a lot of interviews. I don't think I've ever seen the three of you sitting in one place at one time being interviewed. Am, am I right? You're, You're right. right. Correct. So we're making a little history here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. We're time always moves on. The time does move on. Uh, let me ask you, we are uh, potentially looking at a very historic night here. If the polls hold up in terms of our predictions earlier in terms of the polling, not our prediction tonight. Um, and Mike Duggan turns out to be the victor here. He will be the first white mayor in nearly 40 years uh, since Coleman Alexander Young beat John Nichols in 1973. Uh, the headlines around the world will point this out. It's already started. The London Daily uh, uh, Mail already had a headline, Bloomberg's, et cetera. Um, your thoughts uh, about what is potentially happening in this city and what does it mean I think it's an unnecessary headline, and the reason why I make that observation is that for those of us who've been around for a long time, you've been here for 32 years, you would have to remember that in 1972, uh, the legislature passed um, a legislation that created seven new judgeships for Detroit Recorder's Court. There were 74, 75 candidates running for office. Uh, 14 to be nominated in the primary, 7 to be elected in the general election. Urban Alliance, a uh, civic organization, looked at the precincts uh, in 90, precincts that had 90% or more white, 90% or more black, to determine how the vote would come out in the primary. And in the precincts that were 90% or more uh, white, the first candidate that was black that showed up was number 19. His name was Clarence Lassiter. He happened to be uh, an assistant Wayne County prosecuting attorney. In the black precincts that were 90% or more black, out of the top seven, the first seven, four were black and three were white. You could draw a conclusion, which they did, and, and that is, and Chuck, you mentioned it before, blacks will vote for people, black or white, if, yes. they, if they are represented, representing an approach or program that they think is going to be helpful to them. And we've seen it time and time again. Absolutely. Carl Levin, and when he was president oh, of the city council, Mary Ann Mahaffey, right. et cetera. Take a look at President Obama. Be Senator Obama became president right. uh, because people were willing to vote. And so things, this is not something new. Mm -hmm. It's a historic to be sure, but it's not a racial piece that caused this to happen. Uh, let me get, uh, and Mayor Gribbs, your thoughts. You know, I, I think you're seeing less and less of the racial aspect of it weighed one way or another, even incidentally, and that's the way it should be. You should look at the merits of the candidates and move on from there, whether they're <laughs> Hispanic, black, or white, you know, and uh, uh, that's, that's what elections are about. Mayor Cockrell? Yeah, I mean, I agree with what, much of what my colleagues have said. Uh, as has been indicated, in 2008, America chose Barack Obama to be the president of the United States, and they reaffirmed that in 2012. So if America was ready for a black president, it shouldn't come as such a big surprise that Detroit may now be ready for a white mayor. Now, having said that, though, I don't think we can fool ourselves and try to try to conclude that there are not still some racial dynamics that are at play. I was at the barber shop earlier today with my son mm -hmm. getting his hair cut because, you know, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I was getting my son's You know, I, my son's you know where I was going, so you beat me to the punch. Right. <laughs> so I was getting my son's hair cut at the barber shop, and while his hair was being cut, somebody turned to me and asked me why I'm supporting Mike Duggan because I, am, I publicly acknowledged my support and endorsement of Mike Duggan. Mm -hmm. And my response essentially was this. I think the most important color in the city of Detroit right now is green, meaning money. Mm -hmm. So it's all about which candidate is best positioned to leverage a lot of the existing business and economic development that we see taking place in the city of Detroit and expand that and grow on it. I think it's Mike Duggan. And I think that there are a number of other citizens that are responding to the whole issue of it's not about what color the person is. It's about what they bring to the table. Uh, Mayor Gribbs, uh, is there... Who would you like to see become the next mayor? Oh, I'd love to see Duggan. 
but not because he's white. I, as a matter of fact, I didn't think I, I lived to see the situation where a good, capable white candidate might be the mayor. You, you didn't think you'd see that again in the city I, of Detroit? Because it's, it's just sort of the nature. When you have 82, 80 percent of the people that are colored, and you, you're bound to have some very colored candidates, and you do, mm -hmm. and then, then, well, if everything else is equal, I'll, weigh, I'll vote for one of ours. You know, that kind of thinking, even though it may not articulate it. But I'm, I'm really behind Duggan because I think he's the man that has a background now that, that, that the city needs. He's, he's reorganized EMC. When he, when he started the EMC uh, there, they were in a deficit. In seven years, they made money. So you think his business acumen is what Detroit needs at this particular Absolutely. time? Mayor Archer, you have a horse in this race? <laughs> no, I haven't endorsed any candidate. I believe either one uh, are, would be successful in terms of running the city. The reality of it is, is that while both have been very good candidates, they both have been making their case to the public, uh, the reality is that they're going to have to sit down and talk to Kevin Orr. Kevin Orr is emergency financial manager. As I've read the papers, as I've heard personally, Mayor Bing speak about how some of his appointees have been replaced and new people appointed by uh, Kevin Orr has come in and they're running different parts of the city. And so the question really is how much is Kevin Orr, who has tremendous power as an emergency financial manager, is willing to allow whoever is elected the new mayor of the city of Detroit to have certain positions that they're going to be allowed to appoint to. When I came into office, when, when the three of us came into office, we knew how many appointments we could make yeah. because we knew what the vacancy sure. were, happened sure. to be in the line. Sure. In this instance, because Kevin Orr has found the need to make some changes, he may not be willing because to uh, allow either, uh, if it's Mayor uh, Napoleon or Mayor um, Duggan, Duggan <laughs> to be able to appoint to previous vacancies. Let me ask the three of you, you have all served time in that seat. You know the pressures of that seat, <laughs> and, a, and, and you're probably phrase. glad you're out of the seat. But, but, but that, that all, applies no. to he who will not be named. <laughs> 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 all right, we, we, we won't go there. We won't go there. Um, you've all served in that seat. You know it from the inside out. I'm sure that uh, candidate Napoleon and candidate Duggan may be watching this. If not at this time, they'll watch it at some point. What is the best advice that you would give the, whoever the winner is? Go meet with Kevin Orr immediately f tomorrow and sit down and find out from Kevin Orr how he can best help Kevin Orr be successful as well as what appointments he's able to make because you don't need confrontation between somebody who's holding a tremendous amount of power. What you need to do is work with Kevin Orr yeah, but and then that, by working with Kevin Orr what you wind up doing I think is causing the city to progress quicker and if and and everybody if it's going to go into bankruptcy everybody wants bankruptcy to be over and com as quickly as possible and allow the elected leadership mayor and city council to take over and run the city. Mayor Grips. And I was just going to add that, that that second provision is the number one. You've got to determine who you can appoint. If it isn't everybody like we were able to do, uh, how many can I do it now and when can I do it in three months or in six months? You've got to at attract talented people and promise them their, your support and give them direction and give them the authority to operate in the various departments. And you've got 10,000 employees. That's a lot of people to manage. You've got to have that talent up front for each department. Mayor Cockrell. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the first priority is really not only meeting with Kevin Orr, but also meeting with the governor because at the end of the day, oh, Kevin Orr uh, answers yeah, to yeah. Governor Snyder. Yeah. So I would add that caveat to it. But the other thing, as I also mentioned in, during the earlier segment, is I think it's going to be critical for the new mayor to build a strong working relationship with city council. The relationship between mayor and council has often been characterized as divisive. In some cases, that's been overblown. But the reality is there's a lot of truth to the fact that there have been divisions between the two. 
So I think particularly for this new council, because it's going to be a majority new council, and it's also going to be a council that for the first time in decades will be elected from districts. If this mayor can establish a strong working relationship with that council, that is going to position the mayor to make a better case to Kevin Orr and to Rick Snyder that the city of Detroit has strong, stable leadership, which can move it forward. I just have to cite, if I may, sure. when I was mayor and the city council was Carl Levin, Mel Ravitz, and a number of others, but uh, that kind of talent was there then. Whoever becomes the next mayor, should they also come and talk to people such as yourself who have been in that chair? I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> For no fee, right? No fee. <laughs> All right. I would make this observation. After I was privileged to win uh, the election 20 years ago now, uh, I made it a habit of going down and visit with um, Mayor Coleman Young. Um, I will tell you that for about the first 15 minutes every time I came in, I heard about it. <laughs> and, and there were probably and, some interesting vocabulary. <laughs> Richard Pryor <laughs> <laughs> would have met his match. But after that, for the next hour and a half or two hours, um, he was, as he's always been, one of the most brilliant men that I've ever met and, and at Coleman Young. And, and I learned a lot from him, and he was kind enough to share with me his experience and wisdom having been in office for 20 years. I will also tell you that um, since that time, um, other than Ken calling me uh, from time to time when he was interim mayor, uh, nobody ever called and said, could you come by or can we come by or would you mind coming by and here's some questions that we have. So I think that there's wisdom to be gained by talking to people just as I think it would be wise for whoever the newly elected members of city council are to come by and visit mm -hmm. with you and others mm -hmm. um, who have been sitting in that in those seats to understand what their responsibility happens to be and why it's so important to have good staff. One other thing I would mention, and, and you all, you learn by your own experience, and that is when you run a campaign and you have so many people who have worked so hard to help you get there, your heart and your head is how can I bring them into my administration? The how can I, how can I is, pay them back for the work the, that the they The reality yeah. of it is, is that you need to get the absolute right. best and brightest person that you can find in every position that's available to be appointed so that the city Amen. can hit the ground running. So, Kim, what he's in a nice way saying is yeah. political patronage should go out the window, yeah. hire the best people. I remember when President Clinton there were great people who got him to the White House and he had to shake up the White House once he got here because those weren't the same people that helped him become, yeah. in many people's mind, a very good president. Yeah, I was nodding my head when Mayor Archer said that because I mean, that is so true. I mean, I even experienced that just at a city council level when I first got elected to city council because there were certain people that worked with me on my campaign that I wanted to bring in and I ended up having to let a lot of them go. The reality is certain people may be excellent out there in the streets, mm -hmm. passing out campaign literature and relating to people, but when you need a good, strong policy wonk who's going to be able to brief you on a particular piece of legislation that's coming down from Lansing that may have a negative impact on the city, that may not be the best person to do that for you. But that cut, cuts both ways, too. Sometimes the excellent policy wonk is not going to be the person that you want going out addressing the block clubs. So you've got to know who to pick and when to pick them. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, aside from yourselves, you can't include yourself, uh, who in your opinion has been the best Detroit mayor? No, no, you, can, you can't pick anybody <laughs> on this panel. <laughs> well, it's hard to tell. The city's had a long haul. Jerry Cavanaugh, I think, was a very outstanding mayor, and he... Um, suffered a, almost a heart attack, the greatest disappointment of his career when he had the riots. The riots in 67 were the, were the, the after effect that I picked up when I was mayor to, to avoid, avoid that, to bring the black community in. And it was a, it was a major disappointment. And during the first four years, for example, they were talking of uh, Jerry having some future in Washington because of his abilities in running the city. So he was an outstanding mayor, but like so many, so many people in an executive position, things happen over which they have no control. Mm -hmm. 
And what happened to his future was the riots. And he then ran for the Senate, as you know, and he didn't make the nomination. It was the nomination went to to the uh, Sophie Williams. Right. Mayor Arch? Given your question in terms of not being able to pick any one of us up here, I <laughs> well, would see, simply I was say, trying to let you off the hook so I you wouldn't insult anybody no, here. I, I, and I appreciate that. I would say to you that uh, Mayor, Mayor Cavanaugh did an outstanding job when he was mayor, but the one who had more challenges than anybody and who I think, therefore, was the best was Mayor Coleman Young because there were a lot of things that I would have to have tackled in terms of police department, fire department, and a number of other things that he already went through. And when you go through and you start making the kinds of changes that bring equal opportunity uh, to a city that heretofore that had some challenges on those issues, I think it was, it was it's tougher to get that done. And I think during his uh, term of office, uh, first 16 years, even the 20, Mm -hmm. um, I'd have to rank him there. And if you go back and take a look at the Detroit Free Press, when they went back and they looked at all the years in terms of what had been accomplished and what had taken place during uh, each of our respective terms, uh, they mentioned how he had a balanced budget, he made the cuts that he needed to make, mm -hmm. he made the changes that he needed to make, and so Mayor Coleman Young would get my vote. All right. yeah. Mayor Cockrell? I would say ditto. I, I have to agree it's Mayor Coleman Young. And not only for all the reasons that Mayor Young mentioned, but for me as an African-American, uh, looking at someone like Coleman Young, he is the giant on whom all of us who came after, that's whose shoulders we stand on. So yeah, easy pick, Coleman we, Young. We touched on it uh, when we were in the 7 o'clock newscast, and I'd like for you to expound a little bit. If memory serves me right in the reading that I did, Mayor Gribbs, uh, when you were in office shortly I guess before you left office, a report came to you about regionalism and about the, uh, the kudos of regionalism. Um, but you didn't get a chance to really implement it. And then Coleman Young came in, and the report that I read said it sort of stopped there, uh, and it wasn't revisited. Uh, as you look at what's happening now, economics, as Ken said, it's about the dollar, um, should we be talking more about this entire region and maybe a regional government versus the city of Detroit versus all of these other different cities? Well, that's a very interesting topic. And again, I would uh, remind you that there are certain functions that lend themselves to a local area like law enforcement. You don't necessarily have to have 7,000 police officers that I ended up because crime was number one. I had 7,000 police officers uh, in my fourth year. But, uh, and if, if, if we had a broader police department, that could, that could expand. You know, we have the state police. Anyway, it depends upon the... the, so the you think the, there are the, some services yeah, some that service, would work better? Highways that and parks, maybe, and certainly streets and, and sewers. I mean, uh, sewers. What happened with the sewers and water was Detroit started it because it was a big dominant authority and they had the capacity to borrow money and to do the digging and build the pipes and sell it to the neighbors. That's, right. that's I'm, I'm going to cut you off just because I know we're tight on time. I want to get a quick opinion from Mayor Archer and Mayor Cockrell and then yeah. we'll, we'll get you back and we'll have a longer conversation <laughs> about it. <laughs> Chuck, in my view, um, I don't think until the city of Detroit uh, in the minds of those who live in our suburban community pulls its own weight that there's any realistic thought about having regional government uh, like Indianapolis or there's a city I think in Nashville in, in Nashville Davidson and County. there's one in um, uh, New Mexico I think sure but, but there are reasons to have and we worked I mean even when we were both or well, you're still in mm -hmm. for the moment but well, we worked to try to bring about regional transportation. We were not able to do that. We tried to, to, to merge our bus systems between oh, yeah. SMART yeah. and DDOT. Yeah. It, would, yeah. it was not going to happen. We do need a regional transportation system if we're going to be competitive. We do need, I agree with Kevin Orr, who wants to regionalize the water department, have the water department belong to the city of Detroit, as it should, when you consider the infrastructure and the investment, and that the city of Detroit receive a fee for services and for the use of that which they invested 
um, that he is that he's been talking about doing. There are some things that we can reasonalize. When Governor Granholm was in office, she she asked the school districts and others to try to come together. Why buy three police cars, four police cars, five police cars, or six buses, seven school buses? And you know what? <laughs> let's, the more you buy, the cheaper they become. And so, Party. from that perspective, yeah. Yeah. there's a reason to do that. Yeah. And I think that's what the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce, for example, has been promoting. But not you won't get regional government anytime soon. All right, Ken Cocker. Well, I don't support regional government, but I do think that there are certain areas where regionalism makes sense. One area where I think it made sense, and it's proven to be very successful, and it's something that I worked very hard on and was able to get done during my brief time as mayor, is Cobo Hall. Um, I was very proud to have actually worked with former Governor Granholm and the state legislature during my time as mayor to pass the legislation that created the Cobo Hall Authority, which has created a regional board, which consists of a state appointee, an appointee from the city of Detroit, Oakland County, Wayne County, and Macomb County, which now runs Cobo Hall and has facilitated the expansion. And for anyone that's been there recently, seeing that new ballroom, seeing the other work, yeah, it is working beautifully. So I think that's a classic example of where regionalism can work. But as I said earlier, I don't think it makes sense to do it for everything. Detroit still has to stand alone, and it has to, as Mayor Archer said, it has to get its own house in order before we can talk about partnering with others on every issue. All right, yes or no, uh, should the state uh, run Bell Isle? Yes or no? Well, you know, obviously. Yes or no? City, <laughs> yes, but All right, if it's going it. to happen, it needs to happen under a lease agreement, which makes sense, which is why we on city council have offered an alternative lease. All right, Mayor yeah. Archer, yes or yes. no? 30 year lease? There's, there's, there's not a yes or no for me, and here's why. When I was mayor, I came to city council and I said, we can bond out and get $80 million, pay it off over 14 years, put a toll up for $15 for, for you and I, uh, and, and 750 and, and for you, seniors, and, and we, I was not I successful got five in getting it done. <laughs> I, I got five seconds. But in 14 years, 80 million dollars. What's what's being talked about now is right. 10 or 20 million dollars for 30 years. We gotta go. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. All right. Very good. All right. We'll be right back, and we thank you all for joining us. That's a pleasure.